Hey guys, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. So if you haven't already, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really helps me to continue making videos just like this to help you guys out, right? So also please check out respiratorytherapyrc.com for any updated eBooks that I've uploaded for you guys, right? Okay, so this video is about ACPC ventilator changes made based on ABGs, right? So this time we're gonna focus on pressure control, that aspect in regards to vent changes. So don't forget your ABG relationships. If you have a low PaO2, what are you gonna do? You have two options. You can increase the PEEP or the FiO2, whichever is best for the patient at the time. So if you have a high PaCO2, a hypercapnic patient exhibiting respiratory acidosis, you also have two options. You can increase the delta P or the respiratory rate delta P. I might have thrown something out there that you guys are like, wait, what do you mean delta P? Isn't it just the PIP? Well, yes, you're not wrong. And I just want to go into a little bit more about the delta P. So delta P is the change in pressure from the PIP and the PEEP, right? So that difference in between them, that's how much volume you're going to be moving. And you can move the PIP up, which is the traditional 90% of the time way to do it, or you can move the PEEP down less used, but if you're in a tight spot with a patient who is, you've kind of maxed out all of your options, then that could be an option. It's not super widely used, but you can use it. So correcting a respiratory acidosis, here's a little sample problem. You have a patient on these vent settings, ACPC, FiO2 of 50, respiratory rate of 16, PIP of 25, eye time of 0.9 seconds, PEEP of 5, you get back your ABG and it shows 7.0, 70, 75, and 25 as your bicarb. This is a respiratory acidosis, right? So how do we correct it in ACPC mode? You have two options. Like I said earlier, you can go up on the respiratory rate or increase the delta P. So don't forget, minute ventilation is what you're trying to increase, and that is always equal to your respiratory rate times your tidal volume. Your tidal volume in this mode is going to equal your delta P. Does that make sense? And that's only going to pop up in the measured value section because we're setting pressure. So you're not going to see it unless you're looking at the measured value section of how much tidal volume you're getting back on the vent. So some notes on respiratory rate. Again, don't forget to check your eye to E ratio, adjust the eye time accordingly in order to ensure that your patient is having enough E time, expiratory time, so they don't auto peep, right? Always check for auto peep. How funny, that's the next thing that popped up. Uh, always check for auto peep, do your expiratory holds and see where your actual amount of peep is lying, right? So notes on delta P. So don't forget, you can lower the peep or increase the PIP and that Delta is going to give you back a measured tidal volume, right? In the measured value section of the vent. So four to six mLs per kilo is what you're looking for in that measured value section. That isn't going to change just because we're in pressure control. We're still shooting for that. That's a, a good indication that we are using lung protective strategies following that tidal volume goal, right? Don't let your P-plat go above 30, right? So do everything you can to make sure that your P-plat, you can do an inspiratory hold on this mode and check what your P-plat is. Don't let that go above 30. That's increasing the risk for borrowed trauma. So notes on PEEP, specifically PEEP, right? So you can lower the PEEP if it's needed, like I said earlier. However, if you're using the PEEP for recruitment or if you're using the PEEP for oxygenation purposes, then it may not be the best choice. You may have to increase the PIP. But if you're hitting that high P plat of 30, which is increasing their risk for lung injury, then this can be an option if your ABG is showing that their oxygenation has already gotten better. So if you're not using PEEP anymore or their X-ray has gotten better, they're more recruited, they're oxygenating better, this can be kind of something in your back pocket that you have as an alternative to a patient who's kind of maxed out on all these other settings. But if their PaO2 is like 167, you can say, you know what? We don't really need the PEEP anymore. We can actually start lowering the PEEP in order to start blowing off more CO2 and doing what? Increasing the Delta P, 
Okay, so don't forget to get a follow up ABG in 30 minutes. Make sure all of your vent setting changes have actually corrected the acidosis. And don't forget to, you know, be a team player, talk to the healthcare team, make sure everyone's on the same page. And I hope you guys got something out of this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you don't mind taking a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com. I have some eBooks available you guys might like. So check it out. Have a great day. Bye.